Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Ariana from Where Black Sheep Meet and today I'm going to start a new project blog and I'm going to be working on alternative dresses. So I'm going to have my alternative dress part one and my alternative dress part two. So my project blog is basically where I just blog about my process on how I make my projects and also behind the scenes stuff, what's going on day to day. So that's what this video is going to be about. And then later on, I do upload a full tutorial that goes step-by-step -step instructions in case you wanna make these um, projects yourselves. So we're just gonna hop right into it now. Today is Thursday, the... 10th of June and it is 1 54 p.m. So these are going to be the two style dresses that I'm going to be working on for the next couple weeks. So it's one project blog but two different um, tutorials. So the first one is going to be this McCall's 7683. So originally I bought this pattern because I was thinking of doing a very fantasy, extravagant, like sort of queen gown. So this wasn't specifically what I was gonna do. It was just, it had some great lines to it and shapes. So I was gonna like use it for options and inspiration. But when I re-looked at it the other day with a different idea in mind, I noticed this little dress and I thought it was so cute as like an alternative style everyday wear and it just so happens I have fabric that matches it. Now this fabric I got at Hancock's Fabric before it went out of business. It was like on their clearance discount table so I got quite a bit of it for super cheap and it's pretty thin. It is a bit thin um, so you can see through that, but I'm sure I can just make a little slip to put underneath, but I need to start working with knits more because there's a lot of really great patterns I have that require knit fabric. So I want to do some more practicing with knits. And I think this is a super easy, uh, pattern to do. Cause I think it's only got like three pieces, four pieces specifically. So not even four, it's probably only three because the skirt is like a circle skirt and then this piece and the shoulder piece. So it should be super easy. Yeah, see, easy. <laughs> so I am going to go ahead and make this. Oh yeah, see then I have my stretching instructions see if the right fabric should fit, but I'm pretty sure this is, it's pretty, it's got a good stretch to it. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be working on first is this quick and easy little dress. Now the second alternative dress that I'm going to be working on is going to be this one with these patterns. So I have Simplicity 1325 and Simplicity 8837. And with this one, I'm going to be doing this dress right here. Uh, I'm not sure about the length. I might shorten the length a little bit because I don't know about the whole knee thing, just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna be doing this blouse underneath. So it's gonna be like a layered look, but this collar is amazing. I absolutely need to make this collar. So I think this will look so great in between this V like that. So these are the combined things that I'm gonna make for this specific um, alternative dress. Now I have a few fabrics picked out because I couldn't decide. There's so many great ways I can go. So I'm gonna do alternative. I was thinking originally more gothy, which is very easy. You just need lots of black, <laughs> lots of blacks and grays, but I don't have a lot of blacks and grays that work with other fabrics I have, like combined fabrics. So this would be one fabric and this would be another. And I just, I don't have anything that's specifically calling out like the perfect goth outfit I want to make. So I figured alternative style was a little more interesting. So the first combination I'm going to do that I have here is I'm going to do a maroon dress. 
So it's gonna have a bit of a dark look to it a little bit, but not really. It'll still have this nice color. And then I will be doing a blouse. Let me turn it this way so we can see. So the blouse will be in this mothy butterfly fabric. That's super cool. I've had this for a long time. See, I, got, I think I took most of the bolt off of it, whatever the bolt was. Um, so I've been waiting to use this fabric and I think this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna make the blouse in this fabric and the overdress in this fabric. So it'll have a nice busy top, but it won't be too overwhelming with the solid color dress. And then I have my zipper that it requires and that will go with that. So that is combination number one. So I'm just gonna make this specific pattern or this specific dress in the basic style. So exactly how it is here and exactly how the blouse is here. I did get some buttons. So these are the buttons. It's just a basic bag of random black buttons. So I'm not going super crazy with this one. It's gonna go on this blouse like this. Cause I think the pattern on the blouse is going to be enough. I don't wanna, like I said, I don't wanna go too crazy. And plus I didn't really have anything anyways that really blew my mind, especially in the size that I needed. Cause I think there are very small buttons that I needed. So this has a bit of assorted sizes in there. So that is, dress number one. Now, moving on to, oops, dress number two. I'm going steampunk. Yes, we're going steampunk. This is another fabric I've had for a super long time. I bought it because I fell in love with it, but I had no idea what I was going to make with it. See, I, I bought the whole bolt. It was a brand new bolt. And I realized I had this perfect dark brown fabric still. I have quite a bit of it left. I got, what, four yards? So I thought this would be a really great combination. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna do the blouse in the solid brown. And then for the dress, I'm gonna use this beautiful fabric for the whole dress. So it's gonna be opposite from what this one is. Except with this one, I'm gonna dress it up a little more by making binding, not binding, piping. <laughs> I'm gonna make some piping and I'm gonna make it out of the brown fabric and pipe out this one. So that that way it kind of gives it more interest in the dress. So maybe along the bottom edge and along the neckline, all the lines possibly, we'll see. Um, so I'm gonna add some piping. So I have my cording here. I have this one, which I used on my dirndl dress uh, when I made that piping. And then I bought some more. This one's slightly smaller, just slightly though. I think this one, this one's one eighth inches. And I think this one was, I, I don't wanna say it's three eighths. It's somewhere in between that though, but yeah, they're very close to size. I just, this one I got in Germany. So obviously I can't find this exact one here. So this is what I found and it came with a whole lot. So I'm going to make my piping and I don't know if the blouse, I wanna add piping on the collar. I'm still thinking about it. Cause if I do that, I don't know if that's gonna be too much. Actually, give me one second. So I have a ton of steampunk charms and gems. So what I can do is add like some gears and stuff to the very like tips of the collar. I think that would be really cool. And I'll also along the little cuff lines, um, I make my own. See, I have so many different kinds of thinner ones. Um, yeah, I've got a whole bunch of different ones. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is add some gears to that and make it super steampunky. I also have some chains. So maybe I'll do a little drop chain here um, between them. So I think that'll be really, really cute. I'm so excited to make this one especially. And then I have my little basic bag of brown buttons for the blouse. Same thing, I didn't see any 
things super exciting. I know I have buttons here. Um, some of these are buttons. Oh, I have buttons somewhere. They might, oh, here's some. See, I have these buttons. I have these, but these are too big. This is a button. Um, these are buttons, but there's, like I said, they're just too, too big for what I need them for. So I am just gonna use these basic brown ones and I think that should be fine. It's pretty close to the fabric too, so it shouldn't stand out too much. So that is alternative dress number three. Um, so this dress, I will sew up alongside this dress, except when I need to add the, um, the piping, I will insert the clip of me working on this dress, adding the piping. But I do have my zipper. So I actually had this in my stash for a really long time too. I'm surprised I, it's such a perfect match. Look at that, perfect. Um, Cause otherwise I would have done like a white I think the only other color I have that would work is a white but this is I was going through and I was like oh well let's use this so I have that I also put it in order at Joann's they had a giant sale on interfacing so I bought two 10 yard bolts of 911 FW so this is the perfect interfacing the other one I have is this one and you can see this is very thin compared to this see the difference and this was an accident i bought a whole like what was it 50 yard 20 yard bolt let's see where is it uh 20 inches 48 yards it was a full 48 yards so i've been slowly getting through this a lot of it i used when i made all those masks a while back a while back um, so yeah, so I just have a tiny bit left, so I'm almost done with this, but I definitely want to get into this thicker one again. Um, yeah, this is just too thin, but it worked. It worked for all the projects I've done for the last four years because <laughs> I ran out of this and then I, this is all I had left and I was like, well, I got to use it. It's a whole bolt of it. Um, so yeah, so I, they had a big sale. It was like 60% off. So I got two and I think it only came out to like $20, $30, and then I got free shipping. So that just came in today. Otherwise, now I have a giant mess here, but that's uh, what I'm gonna be working with. So my plan today is to trace out all my pattern pieces. Um, this one should be easy too. It's only got a couple pieces there. This one might have a few extra pieces because it's got um, it's got a bunch front, back, collar, cuffs, sleeves. So this one's got at least five or six pieces to it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and trace out all my pattern pieces today for all three patterns. And then if anything, I will start cutting out this one because I have to wash all these cotton fabrics because these are all cotton. So I'm going to go ahead and wash these so they're ready for tomorrow to cut out tomorrow. So that is the plan for today. I will come back maybe tonight uh, to let you know how far I got. Otherwise, you'll get my update tomorrow. Um, nothing's going on this week, so it should be pretty smooth sailing as far as um, getting this project done, or at least one of them completed. Um, yeah, so it should be an easy week this week, uh, just quiet. So I will see you guys later. Hello everyone, it is Friday, June 11th, and it is about 3.30 in the afternoon. So I did get started today. I did not finish tracing out pieces yesterday, but I did finish um, a few hours ago cutting pieces out and now I'm about to cut it on my fabric. So I figure I would show you how it's set up in the pattern, how to lay out your pattern pieces. And I'm gonna show you um, how to modify a little bit if you have a directional print. Um, yeah, so let me just flip you around. So I'm cutting out the uh, moth fabric right now. So it is a little bit directional. You can kind of go, 
This is the way I think it goes. There's more butterflies facing up this way compared to this way. So there's definitely a difference. So what I'm looking at, I'm cutting out the, the blouse. What is it? The Simplicity 8837. Uh, this blouse. I'm cutting out this one right now. So on usually on your patterns, you have a layout of pieces on here, how they recommend you to cut them out. And this is how they get that fabric count. Where is my pattern? Apparently I need it. Here it is. So when it says like I'm doing a size 18 and I'm doing shirt B. So see how it's saying I need uh, two yards, two and one fourth yards if I'm using 45 inch width fabric. So sometimes you go into the store and then you realize you don't have enough when you lay out your pattern pieces. Well, this is how they get that number, is how they show you how to line it up. So I have this lined up right now. I have the sleeve, number eight, and then the two bodice pieces, number three and number one. So you can see it'll tell you two, the shaded ones are different from the non-shaded. So this is normal. This is a normal piece laying face up on your fabric. So that's what I have right here. This is my sleeve. You can see my sleeve piece here. All right, so it's normal face up. Now when it's shaded, it means it's face down. So I have this one face down. It's hard to tell because um, it's tissue paper essentially, but see how this is, you can see there that it's face down. So this has to be on a center fold. So it's on the center fold like so, like so. And then same thing for this piece, it was also shaded. So this one is also laying face down. So I have these three pieces lined out how it is here. And then these other pieces would be normal face up. And the other thing you wanna pay attention to is these grain lines that's going parallel with the selvages. So that's your selvage. Or you can go, if you folded it in half equally, then this would be like a, a guide as well. So I have my grain line here, and this is going parallel to my selvage. So see how it's angled? You don't wanna follow those, you wanna follow the grain line. So this one, this one doesn't have one, and this one does. This one has a green line. Going back to these three pieces here, this is something that you can run into when you have a directional print. Now this is my collar pieces, and this is my sleeve band piece. So in the pattern, it's telling me to do them long ways, so it would line up this way. Now the only thing with that, with my directional print, my print is going to face this way. So essentially, I'm going to need to place, place this pattern piece this way. Same thing with the two collar pieces. They're both facing this way. See, it's following the grain line, but it's not going to look right when I cut out this piece in this direction. So I'm going to have to turn these both this way. So I will be moving these pieces around to adjust and get these pieces fitted in. I tried it already at the top and that didn't seem to have enough up there. So this one, uh, let's start with this one. This one fits perfectly across. So that's gonna be fine. I need two of those, I can cut it out like this. Same with this one, that's fine, those are small. This one in particular is very long. So see how it goes past my folded in half? So this means I'm gonna have to open up my fabric and cut it like that. So it's not gonna be folded. I'm literally gonna have to open up to the full width of my fabric, lay it down and cut it out that way. And then I gotta cut out two of those. 
So hopefully that a lot of that made sense. Um, yeah, if I'm doing, once I go and do this on the brown fabric, then I can lay it out how it is on the pattern. But since, like I said, this is a directional print, so you may need a little bit more fabric when you're doing the directional print. Um, it usually states that uh, it looks like I'll need probably another, um, let's see. I cut out about three yards three yards and 27 inches. I think that's what it was. That's my elastic for later. Um, so yeah, so I, I definitely need another, oh, three eighths of a yard at least. So it's not too much. I might just have to cut off a little more off of my uh, fabric bolt. I still have more fabric of this, so I'm okay. I'm not gonna run out, thankfully. Um, I just have to cut off a little chunk and I'll have to wash it by itself uh, for that pre-wash for shrinking. Uh, I am doing laundry right now, so maybe I'll just toss it in with that stuff. And also a quick side note as well, like make sure that since this is a blouse piece, that you also have the direction of the fabric going the right way. So you don't want to cut out your blouse this way because then your butterflies will be <laughs> upside down or or your print will be upside down essentially. Same thing with the sleeve. This is the top of my sleeve going down and then the other bodice piece going the right direction. So keep that in mind as well. All your pieces need to be laid out in the direction that you want them in. So just be mindful of it when you're cutting these pieces out. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish organizing these pieces and cutting all my pieces out today. That's the goal, is to cut out all the pieces. So, it's a lot. It's 3.30s, so hopefully I can get most of it done today, but I will check back later. Hello, today is now Saturday the 12th and it is about 12.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, I didn't do my update. My girls didn't leave me alone, so it is what it is. But I will update you on my progress so far. So I didn't finish cutting out everything. I got about halfway through and then I ran into a little dilemma. And by then it was getting late, so I was like, well, I'll deal with it tomorrow. So here's what I have so far. So first off, Remember I was saying that I might not have enough room? Well, I was able to cut out all of my pieces in this fabric, except for one of these. But I had enough scrap fabric that instead of doing it crossways like this, see the butterflies are all facing the right way, I cut it the way the pattern specified at the other angle. So I ended up just cutting out that one piece because I had fabric in that direction and that's all I needed was this one piece. So it was like kind of pointless to cut out one strip of fabric this big, wash it, and then cut it out when I had a piece, essentially. So the butterflies are going slightly different. So this is gonna be my outside one. So I figure if this is gonna be underneath, it's gonna be hidden, you won't even really tell. So I figured it'd be all right. And hopefully it doesn't mess things up with how I cut these out. See, this one has a little tiny give this way. And this one now doesn't because of the way the direction it was cut out. So I'm hoping that doesn't affect anything that I cut these out the opposite way. But I guess we'll find out later. The brown fabric for the brown blouse for the steampunk one I cut all those out and I cut those how it was specified in the directions and that fit perfectly. So that is that for the blouses. So they're all cut out minus the interfacing stuff, of course. And then I came to these. This is for the dress of the 1325. And is it 1325? Yes, it is. So the skirt parts, I have the bodice and the pockets. I did not realize this had pockets in this pattern. I was so excited to see there was pockets. But I finished cutting out all of these. 
on this octopus fabric first and then I got to the dress. This is what's throwing me off a little bit. Um, see the grain lines here and how they're facing? Well, I starting, I'm starting with this one. And when I looked at the pattern piece, see here's my grain line, right? But here's my center front. So it wants me to tilt it like this. See that? But then the pattern on the fabric is going to be weird. So would it be wrong to just cut it out the right way? I was thinking they have it that way because if you're doing the longer version, it's it's not going to fit across your fabric like this if you're using 45 um, inches. But even on the smaller one, what do they call it? The jumper? It's at the angle too. See? See how it's, um, they have it lined out the same exact way. So, I don't know. I'm kind of contemplating since it does fit that I'm just gonna cut it out this way. Cause even on this piece, it would be at an angle like this. But I figure this one, I just cut it out this way as well or like that center back. So this has to be, this line has to be straight. So it kind of be like this. And then I got to cut out two. So the other one I would cut out like this, right? Am I being weird about this? I don't know, that, that makes sense to me. I don't know why they have it at this angle. And it's not like a form-fitted skirt, so I know it doesn't need the stretch of being cut on the bias like that. So, I don't know. So I think I thought about it and I think I'm just gonna cut it out like this. Cause if this is my center front, this is the way the front of the skirt's gonna look. So it'll kind of angle on the sides a little bit, but that's gonna be all right. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pick up right now, finish cutting out the skirt pieces in this fabric. I had to cut out the lining pieces in this fabric for this dress specifically. And then I will do the maroon fabric and my, my knit dress pieces, but there's only three pieces in that. So that should be quick. So hopefully third time's the charm, right? That I will get back to you later today and update my progress. I'm hoping I can get one of these started today, but you know how I go. It's already afternoon. Um, tomorrow we're supposed to have friends over for their daughter to come play with ours on our slip and slide. So I definitely need to get something, at least something done today because otherwise then I just have Monday and Tuesday to finish up. So yeah, so I'm going to get started and I will hopefully get back to you guys in a little bit. All right. So it is 4.30 and I just finished cutting out everything. This is a massive pile of pattern pieces right here. Um, but I cut out all the interfacing and everything's good and ready to get started on. I think right now I just have to pull out the threads that I'm going to use, my matching threads. Um, so, well, let me show you what, what it all looks like. So here it is my big pile got my blouses dresses and then the knit i forgot how much i hate cutting knit fabric that stuff moves so much it wasn't incredibly terrible but i mean it only had three different pieces and it was just like a couple multiples of each piece so it wasn't too bad but I, uh, I got it all done, it's all cut out. So, I don't know what I wanna start with. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'll start this on Monday because I need to do the piping for it. So I need to make bias tape. Um, so I might do that on Monday. So I don't wanna put this together yet because I want to know where all, the, all my piping is going to go. This is going to be easy to do. It's just 
Like I said, I'm undecided right now. The knit dress, I, I'm not in the mood to do it right now because I have to work with knit fabrics and I'm not good with knit fabrics. And I'm probably going to use my serger for this because this is something I actually want to wear. So I don't want to do like, you know, my zigzag stitches and mess it all up. Like I, I actually want it to look nice because <laughs> I'm still learning. So I'm going to hold off on this right now, but I'm definitely going to use my serger. And then I have a twin needle to do like the hemming and everything, but I don't really want to work with knits right now. So I will wait for this one to do later as well. So I think I'm going to start on these blouses because this is pretty simple. Uh, I was a little nervous about the cuffs being like buttons and stuff, but it's just a regular band that goes around gathering. So I'm like, oh, that's easy. Okay, so that's fine. This is all just basic sewing. Everything's basic sewing. So I think I'm gonna get started on this because this doesn't need any extra like steps to it that I'm adding. Um, it's just this one. Uh, so I'm just sewing this like the basic, how the pattern is. And then this one, I was going to add the steampunk charms, but it's just gluing it on and stuff like that. So I still have to sew it the basic way it needs to be sewn. Um, but yeah, I'll add the steampunk charms, like I said, to the collar here. Uh, maybe some of the gears on the cuff bands as well, down here on the sleeve. So they're kind of like buttons, but not. So that's just gonna add some, I'm just gonna be gluing that on, which, I wonder if the E6000 would be okay or if I should have gotten some sort of like fabric glue. I don't know if I have, I don't think I have fabric glue. I have Mod Podge, but that's not gonna, <laughs> that's not gonna do what I want. Um, so I might need to get fabric glue, but that is something I can worry about later if I just get started sewing the blouse. Um, like I said, they're both just sewing the basic blouse. Uh, if anything, the buttons are going to take up, or the button holes will take a minute, but I just uploaded my button hole tutorial. Um, it's a quick little 10 minute one, so you, it'll show you how to do it with the machine, your sewing machine, if you have that option, or you can do it by hand with your sewing machine, uh, which does take practice, uh, but also you can at least see how I stitch it with the machine, and then you can sew it by hand too. That just takes a little longer, but it's definitely possible to do it like that. So the buttonholes uh, will take a minute, but putting the whole blast together shouldn't be too long. So I think I just have to record one. I think I wanna record this one. I think that'll look okay on the camera. Yeah, cause this might blend too much with like the stitches and stuff. So I think I'll do this. This one um, for filming for the tutorial. So I'll see if I can get it done since it's, what was it, 4.30 right now. I'm gonna have to make dinner in a minute. So maybe if I start dinner now and I come back, my girls are outside playing with the water table. My husband's watching them in the backyard. That's why it's so quiet right now and I'm able to do <laughs> an update. <laughs> but, um, yeah, maybe I will, let me flip you around. Yeah, so maybe I will just go make dinner, get that started, eaten out of the way, and then I guess I'll see what time I come back. I mean, it's gonna take a minute to set everything up too. Like I gotta clear out my camera from all the old footage that I've already done with. And then I have to get all my um, threads out that I'm gonna be using clear off my sewing table because it's got a lot of junk on it right now. Uh, yeah, so I think that's, I don't know if I'll get started today. Maybe I can just iron my pieces and, um, cause they're all kind of wrinkly. So I'll just iron the pieces, get everything set up and ready to go. So maybe tomorrow I just won't do my workout. It depends. It was like butt day today and I was feeling it after. I feel it in my thighs right now. So if I'm hurting tomorrow when I wake up, I might skip the workout. I don't know, it's only a 30 minute workout tomorrow. I hate skipping. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I will, 
I will see if I come back later and give my update on if I do get started. If I don't, then you'll see me tomorrow. Um, but yeah, the, everyone's not coming over till one. So it does give me a couple hours, but I do have to clean. Their daughter was allergic to dogs, but she's been coming over the last two times because they retested her and um, she's been doing real good. So, but I still wanna make sure that the house is like clean of dog fur because my corgi sheds a ton, no matter what time of year. And um, there's dog fur everywhere. So <laughs> I just wanna make sure it's not overwhelming for her when she's here because they're gonna be outside in the slip and slide, like I said. So we'll see what I can get done tomorrow. I don't know. And then, what's it in? <laughs> Today's Saturday. Okay. I feel like it's Friday right now for some reason. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'll just have to get a lot of work done on Monday. So I can get it all done on Tuesday for this video. Because then Tuesday I gotta put all this together and edit for you guys for Wednesday. So... Yeah, that's the update right now. It's been a it's been a good progress Saturday, I think. It just took a lot longer. The cutting part. Oh, I'm babysitting right now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, the the whole cutting out part is one of the worst parts. It takes the longest. No matter what project you're doing, the cutting part is always the longest part ever. But all right, I'm rambling now. So I will update you if I start anything. If not, you will see me tomorrow in like two seconds. Good morning. It is June 14th, 14th, and it is 11 in the morning. So I am just about to get started um, sewing and everything. I'm ready to go. I just realized I didn't pick out a nail polish color. So let's go ahead and pick out a color before my girls come find me in my room. <laughs> So I'm not really sure what color I want to go with today. Um, I'm doing like alternative. So maybe I see this one popping out at me a little bit. Go shake it. This is 11. It's like a neon green. It definitely needs to be shaken up. Hmm. Actually, it's it's not neon green. It's more of like a a mustard yellow green in person. I actually kind of like that. I've never worn this one. And then I have this one. 305. Oh, maybe I might do that one. Do I have any other? This is like a mint. And that's like a very muted green. I don't think I want that one. I don't know. I'm kind of vibing. Uh, that one's pretty, but I'm kind of vibing off these neon greens over here. This is more of like a minty leafy green. All right. Let's, let's go neon green today because I haven't done this before. I haven't done these colors before. Thing is, do I want this mustardy yellow green? It looks really good on the camera, but I mean, minus minus the shakes, but hmm, or this neon neon green, like a frog green almost. <sighs> decisions, decisions. Let's go with. I like this color for some reason. It's kind of ugly, but I kind of like it. It's like a baby puke almost in person. Hmm. I think I'll go with, I'll try this one, 11. And if I don't like it on my nails, then I'll switch to this one. I think that's what I'll do. All right, so I'm gonna go paint my nails. And these dry pretty quick, so I give myself about 45 minutes or so so that they fully dry. And then I will get started on sewing. I'm going to start with the blouse. This blouse here, the butterfly one. And I might sew up the solid maroon dress just to 
have all that sewn up. And then later, if I have time, then I just go back and record the parts where I'm adding the bias tape on the other ones because I don't need to record them in total both. Um, and then that way, maybe as long as I get both of those done today or almost completed today, then tomorrow it would just be finishing up the knit dress, which is going to be super quick and um, sewing the bias parts. So that's the goal today. So hopefully, hopefully we get it done. I got to hustle my butt today, but all right. So I'll check back later or if some mishap happens, I will check back in, um, in a bit. Okay. So it's the very end of the day. It is almost 11 PM right now. And I finished this a while ago before I started dinner and all that. Um, but I did finish the whole blouse. So here is the butterfly blouse and it, I don't know if it really looks like much right now. <laughs> I have to put it on my mannequin and see how it looks, but I've got it all done, um, up into the buttons. So I have all my button holes in already. I just have to cut them down the middle. Um, and then just sew in all my buttons and this one is done. This one's complete, but here's the collar. The collar looks cute. So yeah, it's a little crazy with this print, but I think with the dress part over, it's going to really look cute. So here's my buttons that I'm going to be using. Like I said, this came out of that little pack of buttons I got at Walmart for like $3 or something and I needed a half size so these are exactly half sizes so they're matte black so I thought that would look really nice on there so I will sew those on tomorrow and yeah so I fully underestimated or not under overestimated how much I can really get done today. I thought I could at least finish both the shirts and a dress, but this did take most of the day just to finish this. It wasn't hard. It, um, oh, let me go over the few things, my few little notes I got. So as I was doing this, when I first started, where is it? Right here. Um, Apparently this pocket is on both sides. So that was really interesting to see in this pattern because I was expecting it like the Lolita blouse um, that I just did, how it has one on one side and then it's normal like facing or fold over just once on the other side. But this one was exactly the same on opposite sides. So that was interesting. I was very confused because I was like, wait, did I cut out the same pattern piece twice by accident and I needed another one? But no, it was, um, they're both the same. So that was really interesting. The other interesting part about this pattern was, it's right here. I was like, wait a minute, when do I do the gathering base stitches between the three dots on the sleeves? Usually you put them there and then you gather between the dots that go on the shoulder areas. Well, it turns out you don't put gathering base stitches on this one. Like it fits perfectly. I haven't seen that out of all the sleeves I've attached. None of them have been without the gathering base stitches at the top of the sleeve. I was so shocked. Look, it's got the tiniest bit of gathering, so you don't really need the stitches there to get that. You just gotta make sure you hold all that fabric in this area and that it doesn't move down. So that was really interesting to see. That was my first sleeve. I didn't have to put the gathering stitches on. So I was super confused. I was like reading the directions over and over and I was like, wait, when do I put the stitches? <laughs> Where did they go? And see, yeah, see? It doesn't have them here. It just says to put them at the bottom because the bottom is gathered. See? So, super, super interesting. Oh, also, I did pick that color, that mustardy lime green color, and I'm kind of in love with it. 
it's so different. I know it's got like a 70s vibe to it, but I don't feel 70s. I feel like, I don't know, it's so different. It looks really good against my skin tone too. Yeah, so I'm loving it. And that color is from her new line. Yeah, this is the color. It's from her, her Lights Lacquer line. So you can definitely pick this up now. Um, in case you're interested in these nail polishes I'm always using. Remember her Kale polishes were her first old brand and um, she doesn't have that brand anymore due to legal issues or apparently or something. You can go back on her YouTube channel and go back, 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 back and you can probably find all that. But um, this is her new line, Lights Lacquer. So this is the color. I'm really, really liking it a lot. Very different, very unique. I'm uh, pleasantly surprised. But seriously, I really think I am overreaching with my goals a little bit maybe, but I feel like if I do something less, then this these projects will just drag out for forever. So I'm gonna continue to do my overreaching goals and just try my best to reach them. So that way I get as much as I can done. But I have tomorrow, I'm probably just going to do a little bit tomorrow. I don't know how much because I do have to edit this for Wednesday. So I don't know, like I said, I don't know how much work I'm going to get done tomorrow, but we'll see. Maybe I'll just sew up the second blouse or just get started on it. Or I'll take a look at the dress um, for this and see how much stitching will, not stitching, too much cross stitch. <laughs> See how much sewing I will need to um, do to complete that dress. But for now, I'm stopping here. I'll check back in one more time tomorrow and we'll see what we do tomorrow. And then I will edit and you guys will have this up on Wednesday. So I will talk to you guys then. Hello, today is now Tuesday the 15th and it is 10, 15 p.m. right now. So I actually did quite a bit today. I was, I kind of shocked myself at how much I got done today when I really, I really wasn't expecting to get anything done today. But um, I did finish the dress portion for the most part. I have a little bit more to do on it, but for the most part, it's assembled. So this is what I got done today. So I ended up getting the dress done. Now I'm a very big size in the waist. <laughs> so it doesn't look as good on this mannequin because this mannequin is, as you can see, that's like the tiniest waist in the world. But, um, yeah, so this dress doesn't hang well on it, but this is the first look. I think it's something I have to wear to see if I'm gonna love it, but the blouse is basically almost done. I just have to still sew on the buttons. And then what I have to do on the dress is I have to do all the um, hand stitching to sew in the lining, basically, and to sew in the zipper. It's my my one pin there you can see, but if I open it up, yeah, see, I gotta hand sew the zipper in and then the lining to the dress. But otherwise, oh, and then just like the hook and eye I have to add, and then I do still have to hem the bottom, but I wanna try it on to see what length I like on it, but I don't know. On the mannequin, I'm not crazy about the silhouette, but we'll see. I think it's something I have to wear to adjust or see the full thing. But it's interesting. I'm interested in it. Like, I don't think it was a bad combo. I just, I don't know. I think with it has to be a look. I have to do like my hair and my makeup and like put on like my boots or something and really like pull the whole outfit together in order to see it like come to life kind of thing. So this is the first look. So I'm really excited to see my steampunk one. Now I'm getting a little unsure about the piping just because of this V here that's making me nervous. Like I'm obviously having issues right here with the, the point. 
I think it just needs to be ironed out or something, but um, yeah, the putting piping here, like I was imagining, I'm getting a little worried about this little spot and how the piping is gonna react to that little curve. Um, but I wanna put it along the neckline and then along the armholes and then at the bottom of the skirt. It'll be this octopi fabric and then it'll have the brown piping. So, or I don't know if I should do brown now because that might blend in with the, with the blouse of it. Hmm. Well, I have time. In the end, I finished this full one. So whatever else I do to the other one is just extra, essentially. Extra little bits I'm gonna be inserting. But that is the first dress. So the knit dress, I will just have to wait. I don't know if I'm gonna continue this vlog and make a part two with that because I essentially got this blouse and dress done with everything I needed to say. Um, yeah, so I mean the knit dress is just gonna be a quick stitch, so I don't think it's gonna take, oh, got cut off. I had a, oh, you can hear my husband's phone's going off, the Amber Alert going off. Um, we get a lot of those here in Texas. A lot of Amber Alerts. Yeah, so the, the knit dress, I don't think I'm gonna have a lot to say on it, because it's gonna be a very quick, it's only three pieces. So, so if I have any issues, it's just in me sewing it together, which I probably will, but it's not gonna be enough to make a whole vlog video. So I will do this one. The dress, I think I will just keep as a dress tutorial, um, the knit dress, and that will be all I'll say on that. Um, but I will get this up for you guys tomorrow or you'll be seeing this already. And then I will do the tutorial for the blouse and the jumper skirt. Otherwise, I guess that's it for now. Um, yeah, is that it? I think that's it. Um, oh, the best part, look. It's got pockets. I love the pockets. They're so easy too. Pockets are so easy to put in. Like how do I not put pockets how do they not put pockets on every outfit? <laughs> but I love the pockets. Love it. I'm so excited about them. But yeah, so I'm going to finish this up this week. It gives me a week to work, to finish these up and then work on the um, tutorials. Uh, so that's about it. Um, thank you guys for watching and go ahead, like if you'd like to like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing the tutorials for this go ahead and make sure your bell is clicked on so that that way it'll notify you when my videos go up so you'll be in the know of when i upload but i usually do it on wednesdays and then the first saturdays of the month are my cross stitch videos but otherwise i will see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching bye